God bless you. Thank you for joining us this evening. We are the Shabbat Church, affectionately known as the Place of Passion. We have two services this time with you in mind. One on Wednesday at 7.30 and on Sunday morning at 10.30. We hear it on Wednesdays to experience it on Sunday. If ever you are in Central Florida and would like to visit us, we have an empty seat and loving arms to hug you when you come. Thank you for making this your worship experience tonight. My name is Dr. Todd Hall, the senior pastor. God bless you. Amen. Give me a little more volume here. Good evening. I said good evening to all of you. Have you had a blessed day today? If you have, clap your hands and let's make sure. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. This is excellent, don't touch nothing. Your iPad is fired. Let us go into the house of the Lord for truly this is the day that the Lord has made you ought to clap and say, I shall rejoice. I said, say, I shall rejoice. And be glad in it. Believe it or not, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. We ain't going to have no church. We in Bible study, but heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. And the name of our God is Jesus. If you don't get excited about that, the righteous son of God, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. First thing I want y'all to do, and I want you to be very loud and jubilant, is thank God for the re-election of my chief prelate, the Honorable Bishop J. Drew Shedd. Four more years. Four more wonderful years under a leader who is transformative informative demonstrative but above all that he's a worship i believe it and i'm not going to change it till proven otherwise anything uncovered will spoil look at somebody and tell him if you're uncovered you will spoil a spoiled child is parents who let the child do whatever they want to do that means they took the lid off and there's no limitations or restrictions that child normally becomes a menace to society. So stop speaking spoilness over your children and speak greatness, speak discipline. Come on, clap for our children, let's do that. We thank God for the presence of our executive pastor, the former pastor of Shabbat Church, overseer Sonia Mixon. She has given most of her life to this ministry as pastor. And uh, now God is causing her to yet preach, bring it down the tad bit, yet preach, but yet do it in wisdom. We are glad that she made it through the trials, the tribulation and the turmoils of one of the most dreadful diseases in the world, cancer. It has, it has attacked so many that I know now, and it's becoming regular. And I don't want to get uh, put in, I guess you call it prison by Facebook or whatever, but I just believe that something's in the foods that have never been in the foods before. 
So y'all need to go back to saying grace and not the quick prayers. I don't hear nobody need to go back to bowing your head and really talking to God over these foods. All right, because the best way to make America not be so congested and get rid of a lot of people is through medications and food that may have things in that don't belong there. So uh, look at somebody and tell them it's praying time. I want to thank God for our assistant pastor tonight, Elder Frank Mixon. Once again, I want to appreciate him for traveling with us to Memphis, Tennessee, along with others that I mentioned on Sunday, but he has seen this ministry go through certain uh, transformative things, and he's watched us go from the bottom, uh, rising to the place where we are now. I don't like saying top, but he has seen it all, and uh, if anyone could tell the story if I close my eyes he could tell the story thank God for overseer Shimon Scales from Jacksonville Florida y'all stand and clap for the overseer never sit on bishops overseers or pastors one day if you are ever elevated to be that you will understand that when a judge comes into his or her courtroom, the first word you hear is all rise. Then you hear the honorable. And the Bible says an elder that rules well is worthy of double honor because they are like judges. So thank God for overseer Shaman Scales one more time. Tonight, I want to thank God for Dr. Gloria Mixon and her presence here. We have two guests here tonight. Shabak, I said we have two guests with us tonight. And both of them are from Savannah, Georgia by way of YouTube. Sister Sh Shavandra Samuel Stan, where are you? Shavandra, can y'all clap for Shavandra? And Jacqueline, Jacqueline Hopper, we want to thank God. And they're excited about being here. I'm excited to have you all. Thank you for coming and sharing with us. On yesterday, a very important woman of God celebrated a birthday. She hit a milestone in her age, Dr. Barbara Hope, on yesterday. And I called her. I called her. I've, I have a number. But I went through protocol in case he, as he gets old, he gets jealous. So I called the husband's phone and I said, can I speak to your wife? Somebody say amen. amen. You've got to think as you get older, people change quite a bit. And then on tonight is one of our new members' birthday, Sister Sh Sharita Wilson. Where are you? Is she here tonight? Sister Sharita Tamara Wilson. All right, let's thank God for her anyway. We had church on Sunday, you hear me? And Berlin said it was real good. We had an experience with God on Sunday and I wound up calling two people that are close to me to make sure they were okay because if anything that was a service you should not have missed for no reason at all all right you've got to put your soul in a healthy posture and not let your humanistic qualities control your spirit but let your spirit control your human being 
because we only see your flesh because the spirit is living in that temple. Amen. I don't, and if that spirit should exit, we would never visibly see you again. So let's thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God for our newly, but not newly, ordained addition, Elder Mary, being here with us on and his lovely wife. And on this Sunday, somebody shout this Sunday. Our guest speaker is a new elder here. Elder Donitra Edding Stan will be preaching the word of God. And y'all can tell she done did something to her leg, but it better be healed by Sunday morning. Y'all may be seated. You ain't get, getting out of it for no reason at all. Amen. How many have ever heard of the gospel artist, Sister J J Kaylin Carr? No, lift your hands high. Sister Jacqueline Carr, and, and I want my members to participate. I don't push a lot of people. She will be in the city on Friday night. You should clap for that right there. Her father and I are close. Her mother and I, sister, she calls me uncle, but she's high up now, probably within the top three people in the gospel industry. She's being brought here, and I'm glad y'all put it up, by one of our sons of the city, Keyshawn Miller. Clap for Keyshawn. <laughs> Keyshawn is sponsoring this. Your bishop will be present. I don't know how my face got on that flyer. But your bishop will be present along with his crew, it is on 800 North Pines, I believe, Pine Hills. I need my members there. Now the tickets are $40, go to the next screen. You have to go to Keyshawn Miller's page, jot this down. I want y'all buying tickets tonight because I think that he deserves our support. Whenever we don't have a drummer, whenever I'm in need of musicians, if Corey doesn't get it, I can call Brother Miller and at the drop of a hat, have a band put together for anything I need, right? He's a young man. He needs support. I support young people. Do y'all know that? All right, I'm going to say it again because my young folk can't say nothing, but I support young people. I believe that they have something to offer, something to say, but that they need enough wisdom to know how to say it. All right, but this is singing. She will be there along with other artists. I need you to go to his page. At the top of his page, there will be the Eventbrite page. Tap it, go from there. But do we have them with you or are you getting them later? Excuse me? All right, I want two of you to see Dr. Mixon after church. Now, let me tell you which two, because I believe one day our own singer, Jonathan Vickers will be as large and as popular as all of these. I don't think anyone should rush to go to the top because on your way there, there are many pitfalls. Many. My brothers, my entire family are into entertainment. I am in that scene. I know what I'm telling you. Nothing goes smooth in this industry. Nothing for no one, amen? And then you have to remember Satan does not want you to make it. So he had some undercover attacks, but we know that our man of God, Elder Vickers will be fine. And he's properly covered. I don't hear nobody in Jesus' name. And he has a lovely wife that has his back and makes sure he's good. And she loves her pastor. 
There ain't no joke about that. Amen. I don't want people just going out here doing your own thing too fast. It's going to blow up in your face. I'm telling you what I know. Take your time. Time is a gift from God. But please go purchase your tickets. Um, uh, do I have anybody who actually loves her, like plays her music often? Raise your hand. You play her music often. I see a hand back there. Stand up. Are you free on Friday? I'm going to give you a backstage ticket, front row seat. I don't hear nobody to hear Ja'Kalen Clark. Now, don't lie. Who else? Because I ain't see a lot of hands saying you play her. I did not see a lot of hands hearing that you actually play her. I don't know if you fully tell them the truth. Do you play her often? Every now and then ain't often. The key word is often. Amen. But I'm going to send you, but I don't want to send you alone. Uh, who is the young man in front of you who's always with you that I know is in your family? Are you free on Friday? You want to go with your mother? Two VIP tickets. Now, I'm a giver. I give my guys in this church tickets to the NBA game, front seats. They be taking their girlfriends and everything on my dime. I send them. All right. I have season passes that I don't use. And when I don't use it, I text them and I tell them, go enjoy yourselves. Amen. You've got to be someone who cares. Amen. Amen, amen. Please go and do that. I'll announce the rest later. Get your Bibles. They will not show it. They removed it from YouTube. They're putting it back up in a little while. But your pastor's preaching on social media at the 116th Holy Convocation hit 1 million views on this week. Now that's big, especially if I would have had monetary value to it, but I missed it. I think I want to read our mission at the end. I want to go straight into teaching. This will be for now my last communication to you on a Wednesday on miracles. Someone thought they felt that they needed to remind me, give me three people that talk to me, but I need you all to know, I remember everything I've preached from this pulpit, most of the time around the world for almost 40 years. I don't know how I do it. I don't know how God allows me to do it, but I have a great memory. And I know that some of you may have think I taught on seed before but not like this. I need to get you ready to know what to do with your harvest. High five somebody and tell them I need instructions on how to handle my harvest. And the first thing I'm going to have to teach is how to come out of your famine. Now, there are a lot of people not clapping, not moving, and they don't believe what I teach, but response determines results. When you sit on what can help you, it'll sit on you. Most of what I have and acquired in life from degrees to dollars came through worship. And even though I'm older than most of these young people and whatever, I still move, dance, and run like I'm 30. Because what you have today can be gone tomorrow. You never read that scripture, the Lord giveth and the Lord take the way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
but I don't have time to start over. Will you tell two people I do not have time to start my life over? Some of us are too old as it is to be talking about starting over. You ain't starting over. You checking out. You leaving here. So you better make the best of your life. Because you're leaving here. Start living for you. So I got to teach you how to come out of famine and then teach you how to actually handle the harvest that I see coming to many of you. And you should applaud your neighbor's success right now in Jesus' name. I won't name them all. Somebody can help me. But I have taught on the, the, the miracle in the mess. The miracle in the mud. The miracle in the meal. Oh, y'all hear the miracle in the drink. The miracle found in instructions. What was the last one? The miracle? The miracle found in preparation. And tonight, for those who will talk, oh, and and that's one of my favorite. The miracle found in company. That's one of my favorite that I bet some of you did not exercise those principles yet. But every year, I delete 300 contacts out of my phone. New Year's Eve, they do not cross over with me. I go through them and say, was there any value to this relationship? And when I see absolutely no value, I press delete. So if you text me and I ask who it is, I hope you're better next year than you were the last year. Because I ain't got no soft spots in me. Not for my kids, not for anybody. I have no soft spots because when you come through the valley of the shadow of death, y'all missed that on Sunday. And you're sitting at a table that was prepared for you. You don't have time to go back in the valley. Being nice to someone that didn't expect you to make it to the table. Three of you that's got a little church in you, just jump up and shout, I made it to the table. And tonight, with our finale for now, is the miracle found in persistency. And before we go there, I want to put up a little te testimony in the back. Because y'all thought I forgot, but you got to stay alert. People are still getting miracles. And Pastor Raheem pastors the 3D Church of Shabbat in Leesburg. Clap for him over in our preacher. And he is a great servant. His gifts are definitely visible in this church. No ifs, no ands, no buts. I want to put what he sent me on the screen if y'all have it. Unless I sent it late and Minister Sheely didn't download it. But there was a text that I sent. If you don't have it now, we can do it by the end. Well, yeah, on uh -huh, that right there. Yeah, that. Uh, Dad. See, that's when you know folk love me. I know it's late, and it was. But I got to tell you, exclamation point. Y'all ain't going to get happy. One of our members got a new car today. Another member got a new house today. Another member starts a new job November the 18th. Another member got offered a job making six figures. Thank you for applying pressure to my character, I love you, and I love you also. Don't get jealous, just learn to obey.
Sister Clinton said on Sunday, even though some of y'all didn't hear it, she wanted to take a personal leave many times because of the harshness of the gospel that I preach. She said she glad she stayed and never left because it got her prepared for the, what she had to go through. Some of you were just not raised around principles, policies, disciplines. Your parents let you do whatever they want to do, but God has order in his court. I don't hear nobody. And the church is a court. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Talk to me. Enter his courts. And you don't just get to do what you want to do in a court. You will be held in contempt. In jail and not even on trial. For your behavior in the court. I want to tag this with a subtopic and a theme. Look at two and three people and mean it. Tell them, don't give up. Because some of you have not received yet. And there's several reasons and it ain't God. But I don't want you to get so depressed and down and out that you allow the satanic voices in your head to tell you this ain't real. Just tell two and three people again. I mean it. Don't you give up. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Most of my teaching is in my reading tonight. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith. I know you heard this scripture when we did our faith series. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he or she that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them. Here goes persistency that diligently. I don't hear the front row. Y'all remember what I said? That diligently seek him. Put that in the message Bible just in case. It starts in verse 5. But an act of faith. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. Look, somebody tell me, I would love that favor right there. They looked over and couldn't find them because God had taken them. Not by death, but by life. See, you don't get excited about the right things. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken... He pleased God. Look at your neighbor. This need to tell him, just please God. Please him. It is impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone that wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Can I pause and tell a quick story? Some of you that I know ain't even old enough for the story, but those that are older than me and my age should remember the story. Raised in Brownsville, Brooklyn. I don't know if everybody played this game universally, but years ago they made up a game. It was called Hide and Go Seek. I believe, Jenkins, they may have used the Bible to create the game because the Bible said, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Y'all quite knock. Uh, the basic purpose behind the game was you had everyone 
had to close their eyes and go blind to the person you saw that now you have to find. It's quite, you have to close your eyes without cheating. Because we got a lot of cheaters in here without cheating. Because I've been there. You say, my eyes are closed, and you spread your fingers up. Huh? But you have to. You got to turn your back, close your eyes, and count to ten slowly. Nothing is quick about this game. And they get to run and hide and they remain silent. And your job is the first one to find them becomes them. Y'all just missed the story. Look at the young adults. What? Whoever finds them becomes a person of power. So what God does is he introduces himself to you. Then he tells you, turn your back. Close your eyes. Count to ten slowly. I'm about to hide. And if you want me diligently. Oh, young. Hold on. If you really love me and not just what I have to offer. I want you to not look for the car. Look for the house. Look for a companion. Find me. And some of you have had many potential whatever and lost all of them talking about they weren't the one because you didn't find the one. Seek ye first. If I was preaching Sunday, I'd be tearing this up. The kingdom of God. His righteousness. All these things. And I'm going to call these things tonight distractions. Sometimes what you get can blind you to who you need. You got a new boyfriend, now you don't go to church because y'all in the dating process going to movies on Sunday. You stupid. That you give an attention that belongs to God to a person. Then once they hurt you, you want to come back to God. Look at someone, they're sitting there telling them, that's not the way this works. You keep seeking. Now, I remember playing that game one time. And there's two rules I think y'all are not excited about that you should be excited about. And one is they have to hide within a limited space. So even if you can't find them, they in there. Oh, this are, they are not outside. Oh, what's yours is around you now. The issue is you stop being persistent. You stop being diligent. You ceased seeking. I've been there. People be giving up. They lied. They ain't in here. I done been in room with 10 people looking for one. And we all in there said, when we turned up and closed out, they probably left out the house. They ain't in here. But I kept seeking. There was only two people seeking, me and my friend. I can't remember which one it was. He was like, you giving up? I am, no, I'm not giving up. It's in the house. <laughs> I ain't even trying to preach to y'all. Look, somebody tell him it's in the house tonight. And for those that leave without it, it's because you gave up. You, not God. God is right where he said he would be. I was about to give up. And the way I won the game one night for two folk was stand, two that are vibrant, is what was hiding from me 
made a mistake and had to cough. Oh, uh, y'all don't hear it. And that one little sound rekindled all my fire. And I found what I needed and I became them. Let's go further. What belongs to some of y'all by the end of the week is gone. <coughs> and and y'all need to keep negativity out of your ears so that you can hear clearly when God is calling for you. He does not always speak your language. The mere fact that a sound was made rekindled all of my joy and said keep looking tell two people that looks happy not that looks dead be careful just tell them keep looking here yeah, keep looking now I need to tell y'all the truth about me cheating in the game of hide and go seek cheated one time Everyone had to turn around, close their eyes, and etc. I looked at everyone who was playing. It's 10 people max because the house wasn't big. I knew who I wanted to become me. So I had my eyes on them more than they had their eyes on me. Oh, yeah. See, what's yours can see you. Oh, y'all didn't like that. And when the right person came close, I said, hey. Everybody else that came that I didn't have favor with, I let them keep looking for me. But when someone that I had a relationship with came by, I made a little disruption noise and they'd be like, where you at, Todd? Shh. Walk off and act like you didn't hear me. Then come back. Some of y'all just jealous of some of us. Because God makes his presence known. And every time we run or shout or scream, you get angry. There they go again. That's because you're not diligent. When God, I'm going to help somebody. When God sees that you want to find him, he'll make it easy for that to happen. But when he knows you are a user, a part-time lover, an abuser, a person full of excuses, he will remain silent. And about time you find him, you've outgrown what you need. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. I'm almost done now. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And you that are really here to listen need to. A lot of people don't have enough strength and love for God anymore because to be honest, you are not churched out. You are not a worshiper. There's no such thing. I went to prayer to God today. He said, son, no such thing. You don't exercise your worship muscles enough to understand what an honor it is to be in the presence of the Lord and to work for the most high God who wakes us up every morning. And every time I wake up in the morning, brand new mercies. I'm sorry, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers' temptations. Knowing this, 
that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I wish. Then it says for those who are reading, but let patience have her perfect work that ye might be perfect and entire and after it's finished, one thing, nothing. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, Verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, I hope you feel like you came for a reason. If any of you lack wisdom, let him or her ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not as it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let this particular person with these attributes, let that man think. Let not that man think he shall receive anything. Of the Lord, a double-minded person. Y'all not is unstable. in all of their ways please find yourself within the text please please accept who you are to become who you need to be double-minded person overseer is unstable in all their ways but i want to add a clause from another scripture after that that doesn't fit there but it is apropos for you to hear the difference Verse 8, a double-minded man, y'all help me, is unstable in all his ways. But in all thy ways, oh, y'all, acknowledge him. Oh, I got help in the back. And he might. Stop giving your strength to the situation and give it to the direction that you're going. You're wasting strength on now when later is like, just keep moving. No, not in the right direction, in a God direction. Tell somebody that, text that to me, that'll be my next sermon, moving in the God direction, maybe. Woo! double-minded man woman is unstable in all their ways but in all thy ways talk to me vickers acknowledge him he shall direct your path persistency i'm almost there diligence never stop seeking why did you come tonight if you were going to look lost? When you go to class, you're supposed to sit up, pay attention, and make sure you get enough information to pass your test. Some of y'all ain't got enough text to pass your test. I got enough God. You don't have enough God if you don't have enough scripture. You do not. They are one in the same. Only lazy folk with excuses say, I know God, but don't know scripture. Need to help you. Get mad. You don't know him. You know of him. You were raised in a church family, but you do not know him. Mark 5, verse 22 through 24. 
And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. His name is Jairus. Some say Jairus. Jairus by name. And when he saw him, him being Jesus, he fell at his feet. Whose feet? Jesus. He besought him greatly. He besought him greatly, which means with diligence, which means he was persistent. Y'all, he besought him greatly about something going on in his house, in his family, in his child. My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I wish I had help. I pray thee, something he love is dying. Be careful. I pray thee, pray for my children. I need to pray for you because your child will be all right if you start seeking God the way you're supposed to. Your child is demonic because you have stopped seeking God. I besought him greatly saying, and besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her. That's what cheap saints want, want you to do. They haven't been present, but just pray for me. Touch me. It don't work like that. Lay your hands on her because this is the method in which they were used to seeing this occur. That she may be healed. And that when she's healed, she can have a life. Jesus went with him. Y'all not hearing me. But, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now I need y'all to know as I'm teaching, he never got to the crib or to her domicile, to her residence or to her or to his home right away. Because there was a woman with the issue of blood who cut in on this journey. I call the space between coming and getting there interruptions. Now I wonder, I, 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 uh, some of y'all fail during the commercial. Then you sleep on the rest. He's on his way originally to the residence of Jairus. Because Jairus has a daughter he loves who's dying. And Jesus, come on young adults, understands the urgency of a father or a parent coming to the rescue or wanting their child to live a full life. It does not tell us what she's dying from. Because certain things don't need details. If I say I'm dying, don't talk to me about what I'm dying from. I need you to talk me out of dying. So a lot of you parents fail again because you keep reminding your kids of what they're doing wrong. Who you raised them to be when you weren't them at your age. Why are parents looking at me like you're going to whoop my behind? You know that ain't happening, don't you? Don't look at me disrespectfully, but then want my prayers and help, but don't want to find out where you fell first. That's why parents need a therapist. The child don't need it. Your mama do. Your daddy does. You learn to be a parent practicing. Children don't practice being children. Children are children. Their time to make mistakes, say dumb things, but a parent shouldn't be making the mistakes of their children. You. And let's be real so we can be real and get a miracle. Your children messed up because you had them without planning them. You understand. You practiced. Plan B is not a pill. Plan B is learning how to be a parent. I wish we had a pill to be a parent. Because when you're raising the crazy part of your child, son or daughter, you're raising you. You hate seeing them do that because they remind you of you.
So between verses 25, assistant pastor, and bishop, good to see you. In verse 33, Jesus never gets to her house because he is approached by a person that understands if you need a miracle, sometimes you got to cut in. You got to stop caring about who else is there. Well, you get yours first. Uh-uh, I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I'm not being selfish. I'm being serious because if he's got any virtue left, I'm getting it. You, you, you know, you got to be desperate for God, not desperate for money, desperate for a place to live. You got to be desperate. And sometimes desperation looks like selfishness. Some of you need a miracle because you've been nice to everybody but you. Now you regret being nice to everybody. But come on, let's get delivered. Touch yourself and say, that was my decision. That was, touch yourself, Dr. Deborah. That was your decision. Being nice is a choice. Giving is a choice. Letting folk move in your house, that's a choice. Letting them eat all your food and you don't say nothing, that's a choice. Letting them drive your car and not put gas in it. And if you let them do it often, you train them to do that to you, right? So you got to learn where to draw the line and be like, hey, I did it one time, but I can't let you do it again. Because if you let them repeat it, you'll need a miracle. In all actuality, no one did it to us. We allowed it. Look at somebody and tell them, not after tonight, not after tonight. Because tell them I'm desperate to get back where I belong. I'm desperate. And when you're desperate, you say something like this. And y'all ain't going to scream, the next time I say it, I'm going to mean it. And you're going to find out I ain't playing. Now, I know I let you get away with it before. But the next time I say what I say, I mean every word. See, some of y'all have to stand by that. I want to become a better pastor. I want to become a better man, for real. I want to become a better version of myself. And that's going to take a lot of persistence. Because there's a side of me that don't want to stop being who it is. That's because it likes living without rules. See, can't get nobody to acknowledge that. Well, you're a pastor. You, you, are, you are supposed to have all of that under control. That sounds crazy. Apostle Paul said, and when I would do good, I wish I had help. Help me. He was always present. Then he said, oh, wretched man. And he was saved when he said this, that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death. The only way he could overcome it was he says, there is therefore now no condemnation. I'm not sorry anymore, but I don't want to be sorry evermore. I did what I did, but I'm not what I've done. But the issue is. To become what you need to be, you have to run after him. Now, I'm going to say this from one person who will jump, and I'm going to promise you that God will make your whole family free. And that is once you find him, things that you forgot about are going to find you and try to not let you enjoy the new version of yourself. They like the last you because they thought they could manipulate that. They thought they could control that. And through your ignorance and mistakes with others, you found who you really need to be. Look at somebody and tell them you don't have to like the new me. I like it. I like it. I think I was stuck at, and I'm almost done, verse 25 through 33. There's a woman with the issue of blood. We preached about her. She got her miracle. 
She received the miracle because she cut in. And she does not care. I'm going to see who catches it. That she took something that was supposedly belonged to a little girl. I'm even going to show you how deep this is for three of you with a mouth. This woman had her issue for 12 years and the little girl is 12 years old. You are not the only one going through what you're going through. Somebody has a similar circumstance, but the one that's going to get the miracle is the one that's persistent, diligent. You could have had it, but you ain't. How you get mad at me talking to her and you saw her when I saw her? The difference is you and I is you didn't approach her. How you going to get mad at your girlfriend for going to say hi to him when you say he fine? You wouldn't see her if I ain't say nothing. The thing is, you shouldn't let me see it and you not approach it. Ain't nobody got time to pacify you and wait on you to make moves. A miracle don't wait on people waiting on opportunities. The miracle is I'm going to take my risk. I'm going to do what I have to do. And hopefully God will be there when I arrive. That's a miracle. You're going, you're going to attract some haters on your road now. Thank God I never got saved to make friends. That was never. I can't stay at that church. They nasty. I stayed for my leader. I don't care about church folk. When I joined, I followed the word of God, not the manners and behavior of people. If the 12 disciples would have kept their eyes on Jesus and not on Judas, they'd have been okay. Y'all got to know what you're here for. I ain't here to find no wife, no husband, no girlfriend. I ain't here for none of that. And I sure won't claim it till I have enough of him to put up with all of you. You need enough God to put up with whoever you're going to get in your life. I'm telling you. If you don't have enough God in you, you will regret who you chose. Because people will drain you. They'll lose their excitement over you, your anointing, your preaching, and you'll become common. And you would say, I wish I'd have stayed by myself. What you meant is you need to spend more time with God. You didn't mean by yourself. You meant me and God needed a little more time. Let patience not it. It's a woman. Her. You got to stay in the Greek. Let patience have her perfect work. What that is trying to tell 10 people who won't get offended and two men and women who scream is that if patience is a woman, she won't stop nagging you. Patience going to put you through enough hell until you not respond and make sure your focus is focused. So patience said, oh, you finally made it through this, but you still ain't ready for that. So let me put you in another scenario until the way you normally respond, you don't respond like that no more. Patience is female. And when God gives a man a nagging woman that loves him, it's to teach him more patience. Women are only easy to get along with when they're getting what they want. Once you debate what they have, and especially if they had it before they met you, you've got a problem, buddy. Because you're going to be like, oh, no, no. I had this. Yeah, there's a problem there. Jesus made it known that the virtue between verses, boy, this is going to be good dialogue with y'all on text tonight. 
Some of the men that are healthy are saying, oh, now I know why she get on my nerve, but I love her. She's there to help God bring out some patience. Oh, Rennis, you need it real bad. Real bad. Terribly bad. Verse 25 through 33 shows that a woman touched the hem of his garment and her issue stopped. She felt it. Jesus then, he exposes her, who touched me? And these disciples said, with all of these thousands touching you, you ask who touched you, he said, there are a lot of people who have touched me and got nothing from me, right? Like some of you in here tonight, hearing the same teaching, you're going to leave with nothing. And you were in the same service. Well, all of us got a miracle, got healed, got job, children got delivered. Be like, well, I, what, what's wrong with me? Is you're disconnected from what you're in touch with. You're in church still thinking about what you got to do tomorrow. You are disrespectful. That God can have your undivided. He verbally also says, whoever touched me, the virtue has left. He made it known that what he had was gone. Yes, now I'm going to see who jumps. But yet, after hearing all of that, Jairus does not go home. Oh, y'all didn't care. Jairus said, I heard what he said, but I was here and I ain't moving. Oh, yeah, until I get what I want. He was headed to my house, but interruptions. He was headed to my house, but let's cut to commercial. It's like watching Tubi and in the midst of the good part, they go to three commercials. Now, let me talk about these commercials that come on certain things with Prime and Tubi and Hulu, I'm going to see if somebody actually screams. You know you can watch without commercials, but you got to pay for it. See, when you don't have patience for the interruption, the price is higher. I'd rather watch the commercial because I ain't paying no $9.99 to get rid of some commercials. Some of you are very impatient and it's working against you. It's disqualifying you from a miracle. You're going to have to keep working for what you want. You're in a rush for nothing. I remember one day I was going somewhere to eat. They said, we close. Well, I looked it up on Google. Close. It says, close is soon. Y'all know how it reads. It either say close or opening hours, nine to whatever. But this says closing soon. So I lived close. So I got in one of my vehicles and I broke the law. Y'all not here. I see. People don't like for me to be transparent. I broke the law and I zoomed through three lights looking for police first because I put it on Waze because Waze says cop on the right. Waze says red light camera up ahead. You know, you know, Waze. And after I rushed and broke all the laws for two folk would jump, I got there, they were already closed. They closed early because they didn't have business. What's yours has the right to shut down whenever it chooses to. You can't tell God stay open. Because he blessed the person near you, you don't get to be like, bless me now, Lord. He made clothes on you to see whether you'll come back. I was angry, but the next day I was there early because 
what they were serving, they only serve it twice a week. I was like, I got to get there. How are you angry with who's the only thing that has what you need? How disrespectful can you become that you're so mad at God, I ain't going to church? You want to know who you're hurting? Your own self. You better hope the day that you take off church ain't the day you get hit by a truck. Or find out from the doctor you got a lump in your breast and it's cancerous. Now you're week off, you coming right back. God is not on our schedule. He makes the schedule that we all should be on. If I got a witness, you better clap your hands and say yes. Let me get to the finale. Does not leave. He stays there after seeing another woman get what he was in line first to receive. Here is where one person ought to jump for your pastor if you truly love me and understand it. He has a conversation with Jesus and doesn't get it right away. She doesn't talk to him at all and gets it right away. And some of y'all feel like because you got a relationship with God that that should put you in the front of the line. On the contrary, for those who will scream, you're on the back because you know him. Because he knows if you know me longer than others, you should be more patient and know that I may not come when you want me. Oh, yeah, but I'm always being in the back of the line is to show your growth, your maturity, your discipline. It's making everyone in front of you saying, how are they not upset that I don't even pay tithe, don't have a walk with God. I visit and I got blessed. They are a member and they ain't get nothing yet. What is this? It's simple. You got the miracle. You didn't get God. Uh Oh, now it's quiet. The miracle is not the representative of God. What does it profit a man? Y'all are not talking. To gain the whole world. While you're waiting on things, you have more time to spend with him. Don't nurse your pain. Don't nurse your depression. Talk to God. And don't talk to him about the same thing. I need, I need, I need. Tell him how good he's been to you. Tell him thank you for waking me up this morning. Even if you're broke and in foreclosure, you ain't out yet. Thank him for the little time you have left. Berlin is helping me preach. He said, the little things. I know you're getting about five sermons, so preach them, but he never, ever got so upset, Jairus, that he left. He stayed and had to watch somebody else get what his daughter needed. And not complain. There's not another scripture about him saying that he got angry, hit the woman, told her to get up because he had the clout to do that. See, y'all didn't know that. He's a ruler of the synagogue. He has the clout to rebuke and get someone diseased put out. Instead, he said, let me see what God can do because if he can do this for her, Oh, y'all, because I don't need him to practice on my daughter. I need him to be a professional when he gets to miles. Some of you 
are just proof. That's what some of you are. You don't have a relationship, but you're proof to people who do. God is able. Except some will leave with a miracle and not with him. Some of us will leave with him. And all we have to do is wait on a miracle. What's your option? What's your decision? No, no, don't look down. Look up here. What's your option? What's your decision? To leave here with God and wait on the miracle or leave here with a miracle and never have God? What is your mature decision? Why can't I have them both? Because you're the reason why you need a miracle. You had God and still did what you should not have done. You're the reason why you need a miracle. He didn't leave you. You left him. You're the reason why you need a miracle. Some of y'all looking very confused like this is difficult to understand difficult to understand it's difficult because you don't see the role you played in needing a miracle you would think the story was over but to people who read the bible because you want to learn god if you read past the woman who gets healed, her blood staunches, she's back on her feet. Jesus calls her daughter, thy faith is made thee whole. After that, verse 34 picks back up and he said unto her, daughter, thy faith made thee whole, go in peace, be whole, be and be whole of thy plague. Then it says, for those who are with me, while he yet spake, there come from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain people that said your daughter's dead that means the issue's over stop praying for a miracle it's dead see you're not going to get people pushing you you're going to get people trying to depress you they're not going to tell you hope to 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 be hopeful they're going to tell you stop hoping you that didn't move you're not from my church and I can't mess up this teaching, so I, I need to stay focused. While he was yet speaking, verse 35, there came somebody from the house of the ruler and said, your daughter is dead. Stop troubling the master any further. Let's move on to something new. But look at this, y'all ain't with me. Jesus is eardropping on the conversation of your enemy. And when he heard the word that was spoken, he then speaks in the other ear of the man from the synagogue and says, be not afraid, only believe. Even after the daughter's dead, and so is the woman's issue. When you are being persistent, you have to know who to keep out of your ear. What text to read, what text not to read. When it starts going left, stop reading and let God deal with it. Because if not, it'll get in your spirit and mess up your whole day. And it's impossible to be blessed and stressed at the same time. It just. Izzy, you didn't catch me, did you, Izzy? See, he don't even hear me talking to you. No, no, you didn't catch it. Because the reason why you didn't read the text that I sent, I sent it late. Reason why I sent it late and didn't answer is to see if you came. If you came to God, God's already taking care of your daughter. Your presence does nothing. This is your story. My daughter is at the crib. 
Now, happy Wednesday to you. My daughter is sick and dying, and I'm here talking to Jesus. And God said, if you want to heal, only believe. When a real man of faith's child is sick, the daughter should be with her mother. That's why the mother is not in the story. You didn't carry her. You know nothing about labor pains. You're the provider and protector. Verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word, he spoke and said to the man, Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John. When you're on your road to a miracle, your circle must get smaller. You can't get a miracle in company. Let me get out of here. You can't get... I'm closing it, but I'm putting them all together and you ain't listening. God will withhold a miracle because he hates your pitiful company. Because all they're going to do is hang around you longer because of what he's done. But they weren't there when you were in need. Delete. I said this is the month to tell certain people no because it's the only month in the year that starts off with N-O. November starts off with what God is telling you to say no. You're going to feel bad because you're used to helping everybody. But you're going through a detox. And some of y'all acting funny, you ain't never needed a detox. You were nasty the whole time. You were never friendly. You ain't never been friendly. And you ain't going to never be friendly. See, I don't just read scriptures. I read spirits. You need to ask God, work on your personality. I've been like this since I was a child. Yeah, then you shouldn't be like that as an adult. Because when I became grown, I put away. There's a part of you you got to die, let die before the other parts of you learn to live. I just don't like them. Get over that. That's, that's a bad attitude. That's not Jesus at all. Where am I? Verse 38. He come up to the house only with Peter, James, and John. Comes to the house of the ruler of synagogue. He seeth how much tumult there is and them that wept and well greatly he sees a lot of sorrow in the house ain't nothing happy in there everything in there is weeping everything in there is showing a behavior of it's over if I was church and I'd run right now I'd lie not but then it says, and when he was come in, he saith unto them, why make ye all of this big to do? And why are y'all weeping? Then he says, for those who are not lit, the damsel is not dead. She's sleeping. Hold on. In realistic times, she was dead. She was not breathing. No pulse. 
sleep and death is based upon the presence of God. So when God walked in, he said, I'm good at breathing into dead things. It said the reason why she's dead, because she's around all people that doubt. All people that judge things from the outward appearance. This house is surrounded around people who don't know the miracle worker when he walks in. Surrounded by negative people day and night. The worst imprisonment is sleeping with the negativity. Married to it. Everything is always negative. What am I going to do? Man, say something. Say something that brings us joy. We got four more bills. We know this, but let's talk about how them bills are going to supernaturally because we don't have the money. Went to the doctor. They said, I'm doing a little better. When will you say a lot? When will your word become stronger than the word of a professional? When will your word sound like the word of God that you read all the time? Anybody go to church as much as some of y'all say you were raised and brag about being there my whole life as church. And you should have a whole lot of power. That pitiful power and behavior does not depict that you actually have been in church. Once Jesus pronounced that she was sleeping, which means death in reverse, which means when he walked in, she got her pulse back. See, everybody's quiet. See, everybody, what did he? Once the right person steps into your life. Things that were not responding. Like a real holy woman that's deep and sanctified. Men come around, she don't feel anything. I love God. But when the right man walk in, I, I felt something I ain't never felt before. That pulse done came back. When the right person gets in your ear, it'll make your baby leap. It'll make a dead John the Baptist. Oh, yeah, I ain't preaching. Y'all had church by itself. Make a dead John the Baptist get up. My objective tonight was 930 because I heard two of my members in their spirit disrespectfully say I'm leaving at 930. We all leaving, but you ain't getting no miracle because you're disrespectful. Now watch and see if I be a man of God. God is not on your time. And he may not come when any of us want him. You leave early, get a flat, now you got to wait two hours on a tow truck. Simply because your sleep and your job is more important than your God. Keep frowning. I don't care. You can leave. I really do not care. I'm saved and sanctified for real. I'm apostolic for real. Don't get mad because it's you. God knows your thoughts. And you still have too many things ahead of him. They laughed at him, elder, assistant pastor, and they laughed him to scorn. Jesus, they laughed Jesus to scorn. Everybody in there was like, get out of here. Boo, you're dumb, you're crazy. But when he had put them all out, 
He taketh, because y'all thought she didn't have a mother because you thought I was fixing it. But there it go. He taketh the father and the mother. Mother never went to God. The father did. Everybody can't go to God like you. And everybody can't go to God for you. That's why most folks stay home. And they nurse what's dying. Take the mother and the father. And he takes them into where the damsel was lying. He took the damsel by the hand. And said unto her. Talith lakumai. Which in interpretation means damsel. Young girl. Get up. Arise. And straightway the damsel arose. She walked. For she was of age or the age of 12 years. They were astonished, because they can't find one word for this, with a great astonishment. There's no one word for what they saw. So they keep saying the same thing, astonished with astonishment. Like exceeding abundantly above is a triple superlative because you can't find one word to match it. So you have to say the word great in three different ways, right? They were astonished with great, you know, astonishment's already great, but they with great astonishment. And he charged them straightway that no man should know it. And commanded that something should be given her to eat. Now let me say this. When you leave here tonight, all I'm going to ask you to do is stay away from the naysayers. Don't let the wrong folk have uh, any access to you during this month. And for those who are screaming, keep feeding the miracle. Feed it. Feed it. You don't have it yet, but keep saying it's coming. I don't care. The devil is a liar. If God said it, that you've got to feed it. Read positive scriptures. Quote positive affirmation. Hang around positive people. Don't miss church. You ain't going to call me a liar. You a liar. All stand. And I'm still talking to who's over here. You a liar. And the horse you rode in on. God is not on our time. If I can preach a whole sermon in an hour and five minutes in Memphis, I don't hold y'all late for fun. I'm not happy being here all night with you. I got a life, a real one. I'm retired. I'm tired of being the only one. I want to see my whole church able to retire early, pay your house off early, Keep a good marriage, and that takes time. Now, if you don't have the time, don't come here acting like you don't want to be here. Stay home and die slowly. Folk like Dr. Tracy, who drives the furthest than any member in this church, never miss the service. Almost four hours back and forth, every Wednesday, every Sunday, stands before me, holds a high position on her job, and keeps telling me, keep preaching. Some of y'all live right around the doggone corner. Show up late, leave early. Because you got to go to work. See, you have to. You don't have an option. But when God steps into the picture, 
Everyone get a good offering, whatever size or amount you choose. Play something soft, we're going home. Now, my circle ain't no haters, but I just made one of them a liar too. But come on. <laughs>